As amazing and feature-packed as the 1.0 release of Noita was, the wizards at Nala Games have been hard at work adding even more content to this incredible game. Today's video will focus on several very interesting features from the pre-holiday 2020 beta that came out a few days ago. This entire video is filled with some very juicy spoilers for work-in-progress content, so please keep that in mind. Probably the easiest of these to just stumble into, much to our demise, is the new Luki Layer biome. A dark nightmare scape reminiscent of Hollow Knight's Deep Nest accessible via the westernmost edge of the underground jungle, replacing the previous fungal cavern area. Filled with an assortment of eight-legged monstrosities, if you have an aversion to spiders, maybe keep your distance from this place. As you explore the dark, twisted passages, you'll find pockets of poisonous, dark purple ominous liquid, perhaps the original source of the Hisi poison, explosive fungus, the occasional wizard, and safety drone, some pretty nice wands, these extremely persistent shadow bubble enemies which only seem to take damage when they stop moving, and then the nightmares themselves. Monstrously huge, quickly scurrying, mysteriously unnamed arachnids with freakishly large mouths, which will deal massive amounts of melee damage if you try to move over them. So having a teleport wand for strategic retreat is very useful, if not necessary, if you do not have melee immunity. They can also be extremely difficult to kill, since not only are they immune to projectile and explosive damage, but it heals them. So how do you kill them? Slice damage from spells like Chainsaw and Disc Projectiles is very effective, as is Freezing Gaze, which is what I'm using in this clip. Just keep in mind that the Damage Plus and Heavy Shot modifiers actually add a bit of projectile damage healing them, so don't do what I'm doing. Make sure to take those off before fighting these or entering this area. Heading to the upper left of this biome, you'll eventually enter this mysterious area containing a familiar brickwork diamond structure housing the new Moon Radar perk, which, when obtained, will create a small moon icon above our head that will constantly point us in the direction of the moon. Why would we want to know where the moon is? For completing the essence quests, of course. There is something else that was newly added that also pertains to the essences. This was actually added in a beta prior to the sauna update, I believe, but it was recently moved to a new, more secure spot. Out here, amongst the ruins, in the frozen wastes. The Essence Eater. What does it do? It eats essences. After collecting the four or five essences, and possibly a gourd, and using your shiny new moon radar to locate and then decimate the moon, thus achieving one of the moon endings, you can return here and, by simply allowing this stone to be destroyed, the air trembles. You're safe again. For now. And all essences are now removed. So you can once again peacefully explore the world without exploding everything around you every two seconds. There's also an interesting new addition to the lake out here past the snowy wasteland. A little fishing cabin with a dock. Inside can be found the alchemist's note. Here I'm safe. I am safe. I left the others behind, and I have locked my research so that only those with real understanding can reach it. I should not worry. As long as I resist the temptation, I will be safe. I know my limits. Here I am very far away from them. I should not worry. Above us, on the wall, is a familiar looking sight. A tablet. Tossing one into the air causes us to teleport into a bunker beneath the water containing a damned alchemist, perhaps the author of the above note, as well as a unique experimental wand with very nice stats for early game, and also all of the cosmetic glimmer spells, unlocking them for future runs. These allow us to change the colors of all other spells or turn them completely invisible. But that's not all. If we throw one of the reforged tablets that we create with any of the orb room tablets at the Hisi Forge, we'll be teleported to a second bunker containing a different experimental wand and an assortment of conditional spells, unlocking all of those for future runs. The next spell is skipped every other time this spell is cast. The next spell is skipped if you have more than 25% health left. 
The next spell is skipped if there are less than 20 projectiles nearby. The next spell is skipped if there are less than 15 enemies nearby. If a requirement spell before this succeeds, the next spell is skipped. Any requirement spells before this will skip all spells between them and this spell. And if we were to throw the alchemist's note onto the mountain altar, it vanishes and awards us with 75 gold, so not really worth it. Now, a couple updates ago, towards the bottom right of the Temple of the Art, a mysterious and ominous red glowing triangle appeared. Covered in symbols and glyphs, the triangle acts as a doorway into the wizard's den. It appears to depict the five essences in the topmost triangle over a cracked egg symbolizing the moon in the central panel. Although it has a projectile repulsion field around it, we can cut through it, especially with luminous drills. Obviously, there's more to this. It depicts an egg, so I wonder what would happen if we were to bring some here. Any eggs at all will do. I happen to have a summon egg spell, so I'm going to summon three right now, then approach the triangle and toss them in. One. Two. Suddenly, both the triangle and the surrounding rock dissolve and the gate boss appears. Each piece is surrounded by a field that quickly deals curse damage, so try to keep your distance. Most conventional forms of damage are ineffective, though because it's a physics-based entity, Giga Black Hole is highly effective, shredding the boss in seconds, each piece of which drops a spell on death. However, defeating it in this way probably won't give credit in the progress menu, since you're basically using a physics spell to erase physics objects and not technically killing the boss. Likewise, you can use homing black holes to quickly eat the triangle, however, this too will likely result in the pieces of the boss failing to check off in the progress menu. But hey, if you don't care about that, then this is a very simple and effective way of taking care of this boss. For a more legitimate kill that will check the boss off in progress, we can use a basic accelerating bouncing burst build. With this exact wand loadout, we should be able to make quick work of this boss, possibly even one or two shotting each of the four pieces. Anyway, checking the progress menu after defeating it in this way will show us that yes, it has counted it as a kill. Passing this gatekeeper, it's now time to make our way through the maze-like structure of a magical temple, which would be completely dark if not for the all-seeing eye perk. Eventually, the brown brickwork of the magical temple gives way to the purples of the extremely deadly wizard's den, a biome filled with traps and every variety of wizard, making this the most dangerous biome in the game thus far. It's lined with odd brickwork that has a variety of alchemic reactions, such as creating lava in the presence of fire, teleportadium in the presence of water, and acid in the presence of concentrated mana. Heading downwards will lead to the old orb room of the desert chasm, but heading in more of an easterly direction will lead us directly into the line of fire of the Wizard King, a very challenging new boss. Surrounded by a ring of purple and red orbs, this multi-staged boss will hurl spells and periodically inflict us with a large variety of the debuffs in the game. Attacking the red orbs will actually damage us equal to the amount of damage they receive, so we have to adopt a more selective strategy. Shoot all the purple orbs until they die. This boss will also summon other wizards to the arena, who should be dealt with as they're summoned so we don't get overwhelmed by magical debuffing projectiles flying all over the place. Now, with all purple orbs gone, we can actually damage the boss itself, very carefully while also evading its attacks. When we reduce its HP to 50%, its helm is destroyed and phase 2 begins. It retains all of its previous attacks, green meteor, wizard summoning, phasing casts, swarm shots, and debuffs, but may sometimes try to hit us with a bloody tentacle. Reduce its HP to 25% and its head explodes, sending it into a frenzy of pursuing tentacles. At this point, we want to kill it as quickly as possible since it can and will buff nearby enemies to possess more of those tentacles. After the battle, we pick up our prizes. Currently, it drops the random spell such as random projectile, random modifier, etc. Which may not be a worthy prize for defeating a boss of this caliber, so expect this to probably change when the release branch of this update goes live. It also drops a book called A Cunning Contraption, 
The secret lies in the music. The key to the heaven's lock is born from music all over the world, and in a way, as above, so below. Which is a big hint about how to open the coral and dark chests, which I made a video about right here. Anyway, this is the main attack wand I used to fight it. Nothing too fancy. And this bottom wand is what I used in the final phase to one-shot it, combining two of the most effective wand builds, Square Barrier Spells to Power and Accelerating Bouncing Burst. As with the Alchemist's Note, offering the Wizard's Book to the Mountain Altar also awards only 75 gold. And last but not least, look for this curious box at spawn around New Year's time for a nice celebratory light show, Noita style. Anyway guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy New Year.